There's really two Californias, Northern and Southern California. Across Northern California, there's a great fire drought. Mm. Remember I was talking about fire exclusion policies mm -hmm. across the 20th century. Pre-contact fire regimes were upwards of six to 10 million acres a year in indigenous, a mixed severity mosaic burns across the landscape. This is how California co-evolved with fire, mm. the human application of fire. California burns because of decisions that people make. It has always been this. Way. Oftentimes that manifests as decisions that humans don't make. Okay, so you figure about 15% or so of fires over the past 30 years were natural sources, namely lightning. Like down here in Santa Cruz, we had the big CZU fire in 2020, and that was sparked by lightning. But still, lightning happens onto land management regimes and designations that are designed by the human element inside the landscape, you see. What Southern California has, though, is a great fire glut, mm. great fire fire drought in Northern California, great fire glut in, mm. in Southern California. Chaparral forests are not meant to burn as much as they are being mm. burned. And so now it appears that the Altadena fire was started by high tension electrical lines that mm. sparked in the San Ana winds. And so burying the lines is something that our public mm. utilities can do. PG&E is into it right now. Mm. I guess they've done about a thousand miles so far mm. with a goal of doing 10,000 miles mm -hmm. of buried lines. It costs a lot. It's like $3 million yeah. a mile to bury these lines, you know? So that's why all of our rates are going out. Personally, I would like them to bury all the power lines in San Francisco too, because you know, it looks better. But, <laughs> I but agree. sure, for I agree. other reasons as well.